Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, today's video is just going to focus on the SSG10. No gameplay or anything like that. Um, Exedra in my comment section on the previous video has just asked that I show how to fit the air brakes. And I thought I'd do a quick video on my sound suppression mods that I've done already to my uh, SSG10. So, sound suppression mods, obviously through the camera, you're not going to hear it as well as it is in real life. But for mine, it's really quiet. Um, I've had a few comments already from people in game saying how quiet it is. And obviously not everyone's is the same and whatnot, but mine's pretty quiet. So I'll do a test shot now so you can hear, or a few anyway. And obviously that's not with BBs or anything, um, no magging. With a magging, it's a lot quieter. Even still, it's just like a little thump. And that's pretty much it. So I'll show you what I did. Um, so I'll start off with the externals of the gun. Obviously, I've got the short barrel kit on my uh, SSG-10. So it cuts down the barrel length by... If I can find my other one, I'll be able to show you instead of surmising. But uh, it's nestled underneath the bed. Presumably, so it's lost forever. As you can see, my room is an incredible mess and I need to sort it out. But anyway, yeah, so I think the standard barrel is, say, from this point here to around here, I think. So then if you've got the suppressor on the end, that's another 220 mil, I think it is, so 22 centimeters on top of that. So your suppressor is over here. So obviously the gun, if you're using the suppressor, I highly recommend getting the barrel as well. Just the shorter outer barrel. You don't need the shorter inner barrel. Um, because that just cuts it down way low. So you can get a nice compact gun. Still with a suppressor on it, which is good. Obviously, the inner barrel goes up to this point in the barrel here. Um, it's roughly half the way through. So if you open up your Novrich suppressor, um, what you will find is there is the front section of the suppressor is filled with variating foam from um, big open holes to small holes to big holes and then towards the end section is all just um, big holes um, so obviously the variation is not doing anything because the inner barrel is in this half of the, the suppressor so what I did is just took all the foam out and put all of the um, variating foam into the front of the suppressor that made a big difference. Um, what I have also done as well to my suppressor is um, I've done a fart flap, which massively, massively helped. Um, so I just used some duct tape and then put some Teflon tape on the inside of it and I've just shot through it. And um, as you can see, it's really tatty and it was even worse on the weekend because the Teflon tape was coming out of it, but you just pull it out and now it's working perfectly. I've had no dips in accuracy or anything at all. You can't even tell um so it's honestly just really really good so yeah bit of duct tape on the inside of it either put some like cream or something just to dry out the uh sticky tape on the inside of it um that'll just stop the bb catching on any or the uh, hole closing back over because obviously if the hole closes over then it won't open up when the air pushes the bb through so that's how fart flaps work if you don't know it's called a fart flap just because it it's a flap that opens up when the gas goes through it so when you uh cock the gun obviously it fills with oxygen oxygen it fills with a uh, um so then as you fire it the uh, um the bb has the uh behind it and also in front of it so as it comes up the barrel it pushes the um uh out and then the bb comes out behind it so the uh is in front of the bb as well as behind it and you know it's what gives it propulsion so the air that's in front of it opens up the flap so the bb comes out and then closes back over again when the back end of the air is going past the bb it's a lot of science but it makes sense when you figure it out when you understand it so basically there's a bb the air goes behind it and also a bit of it in front as it goes through the barrel it opens up this flap with the oxygen in, uh, the air in front of it then the BB comes out, the air that is behind it is then trapped by the flap as it closes back around it and stops that noise. 
um, of the external air, you know, the, the extra air behind the BB coming out. It's, yeah, that's how it works essentially, but um, it works. Just put a piece of duct tape over it and make sure the inside doesn't stick and then just do a cross along your, your opening of your suppressor or your barrel. Do that, great. Next, <laughs> so that was pretty long-winded, I apologize. So obviously, for the actual um, air brakes themselves, what you need to do is you need a Phillips head screwdriver and also um, some Allen keys. The Allen key needs to fit into these two and they're both the same size, um, Allen key. It's, I don't know what size this is. I've tried looking and there's no markings on my Allen key to tell you what size it is, so I apologize. But I think it's a three. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sh I don't know why I think it's a three, but I I'm presuming it's a three. Either a three or a two, I don't know. But anyway, so what you need to do, obviously on my trigger guard, it does have a crack in it. I'm already speaking to um, the Novridge support team currently to get that sorted. Um, so you just loosen off this screw here. Okay, and you also loosen off these two. Ooh. There you go. Now this one just kind of loosens and then stays where it is. This one, however, when you loosen it, it does actually come out. So you take this one out, just put that somewhere where you won't lose it. And then all you do is press on your cylinder as you're pulling your uh, your stock up, come out, okie dokie. Now this shouldn't fall out on yours, but if it does, all it is is just to go around your um, the screw, so when you tighten it, it just tightens against the body. Um, so yeah, this little black tube, if it ever comes out, that's all it is. Okay, so set your, that to the side for the minute. You need your Phillips head screwdriver again, and all you're doing is these two screws here on your trigger, uh, trigger box, you are going to just loosen them off and take them out. Okay. Doopy doopy doo. Now I should have prepared another tool, which I haven't, but it's not too bad. These little screws, just put them somewhere where you're not gonna put them or lose them. Okay, and then this trigger box here, it just pulls out like that. As I said, just keep hold of these screws so you don't lose them. This can be put to the side, but also there is another little sound uh, suppression mod that you can do with this. Um, so what you need to do is if you look at the top here, you can see a spring. Now, I didn't know that you could do this from the top. It was my friend Adam who actually figured it out. I took the whole thing apart and don't do that because that is a pain in the ass to get back together. This little spring here, what you need to do is get a um, get yourself a what they call bloody hell toothpick or something small get some silicone i've got the uh the silverback stuff for obviously from my srs got a load of that and then just shoved it down into the spring give it a good coating and um just be very generous with it and if you uh, if you have an ssg 10 and it does the ringing sound that's what stops it is by putting some uh, silicone within that little spring there so that gets rid of your ringing that's another little hot tip so pull that to the side for the time being. If you've already sorted that, then just leave that where it is. So now for your actual bolt, what you want to do, now it's completely loose and you can just lift it up, lift the handle up and pull it out and then your bolt comes out. So here we are. Now all that can go to the side for the minute. Let me just get my little toolkit. This little toolkit, by the way, um, I got it from Tesco's for six pounds. Amazing for working on this gun. <laughs> so you need some small uh, needle nose pliers. And what you want to do is shove them in your holes, either side of your cylinder, and just twist. And then that'll just unscrew. Kidoki, and then there you go. Lift that off, and there's your piston head. Um, obviously, you can just pull all of this out, like so. Okay, so there's my piston, my FPS rings, and also I've done the CAN mod. Now the CAN mod I highly recommend because that's really, really good. Um, yeah, I'll get back to that in a second. But the video, the reason why we're all here, FPS, um, 
FPS air brakes. So these air brakes, you get four in a pack, and all you need to do is they just literally pull out and push in. The, that's as simple as it gets. You just pull it out, and then if you want to put another one in, you just push it in, and then it sits there, and that's done. That is it. So once you've done that, put it back together, shoot it through a chrono, make sure it's good. Winner, winner. So the FPS rings, as you can see, I've got the medium ring and the small ring on mine. That is, and the also the this is the second air brake, um, so second up from the bottom. This setup is giving me uh, 2.3 joules at 333 FPS on 0.45s, which is the UK legal limit uh, for snipers, especially on my site. That is, um, but so that, yeah, if you. are in the UK and you want to set this up to be the maximum potential, try that. Um, obviously res results vary depending on guns and stuff like that, but for my setup and my gun, that works perfectly, gives me the exact limit. Um, this can mod here, as you can see, it's just a cut up can of monster. And all you really need to do is cut it into a, a cut square, a rectangle of about, obviously the, the length of the spring guide and then also um, just make it so it's wide enough to go all the way around it and leave probably like a mill um, overlap. Wrap it around, stick it in the spring, and it'll get rid of the ringing sound um, from the spring wobbling around and banging on the cylinder, uh, the spring guide. This is another little thing that I've done with my SRS as well. It also um, helps out with the bolt pull very, very slightly. It might make it feel like it's got more tension, but as you use it, it'll get into the... The right place because obviously when i first put this on it was all the way down here at the end and now it's worked its way up to the top but it seems more effective in that sense so it's um helping the bolt travel back at the spring you know be pushed back in a straight line instead of um wobbling all over the place and then ringing so that's another little handy one um as well just to do while you've got it all apart you may as well so putting it back together is the exact reverse of what i've just done so you put your spring spring guide in first, then your spring, then your piston. And what you want to do is just get your cylinder head, put that on top, push it down and give it a, a little twist. And then that should start to tighten and just twisty, 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 twisty until it stops. You can't twist it anymore. Get your need and lowest pliers again. Shove them in, whoop de whoop de and give it a little tighten it won't actually move any but it just helps keep it together cylinder we'll go back in okay and just make sure you lock that down because you're cool that's the only reason there's no other reason behind it so then what you want to do get your trigger again shove that back into the hole now obviously if you look at your gun your trigger is facing forward um so when you put it in just make sure it looks right because then you don't put it in backwards or I don't think it'll go in backwards but it's just one of them an easy tip as well for the trigger is if you push it down it doesn't go all the way flush so what you want to do is if you just slightly push it on an angle sort of this way it pushes it down into where it needs to be and then all you do is just shove your oh, sorry my silicon's attacking me shove your screws in give them a little assistance and then they'll be in hold it in place get the other one in and hold that in place while you screwy screwy screw now you figure out where you free your screwdriver there it is and then just tighten these down then there's no need to go like super saiyan on them they just need to um you know be tight you don't need to swing off of them um because you don't want to strip the threads on it. You don't know. Okay. That's friendly of you. Don't fall again. Okay. Um, so now that's back together. Your trigger's in. You can test the gun if you really want to. Um, just cock it back and pre press the trigger just to make sure it shoots and everything like that. Should be fine. Uh, it just saves you putting it all back together and then cocking it and then going, oh, I'm not shooting. So then you can, you know, 
figure out what the issue is. The only issue that is going to be is if you've not put this trigger box back together. But as I say, just make sure you give it that push in that angle and then just put your screws in and you should be good to go, really. If, uh, if you are struggling, just take it all apart, try again. And then uh, if you're really, really, really struggling, give me a message or just comment on the video and I'll try and help you out best I can to try and respond to my comments as soon as I see them. Um, so hopefully I can help you out. So then what you want to do is get your stock again. Make sure, um, obviously, if you've got that split trigger, yours might not be an issue. But for me, I've got to hold this little black piece onto my um, stock then all you want to do is just line it up. The trigger has got its own hole, so then you just slide that in. Oh, actually, before I put it back together, I've just remembered. I have also done a little bit of foaming on the inside of mine. So as you can see there, I've shoved some foam, shoved some foam right in this end bit here, just towards the front. I've also put some in between this screw in this gap. Just any little gaps, really, that I could find. Also, the um, stock as well, which I'll show you when I put it back together now. So let me just shove this back together, and then I can quickly show you the stock. So as I say, this trigger's got its own hole. That lines up. Make sure the front's lined up. Goes together. And then just screw it down. Now, for me, obviously, because I've got this hole... Um, my triggers split my screw actually protrudes through the top So what I need to do is let me just throw all of this back together um, I don't know what I've done with my allen key, which is incredibly helpful um, Oh dear me where's that gone? Have I put it back? Would I put it back? Probably knowing me. I have put it back, haven't I? I did, okay. So there we go. Screw that in. Again, the, these screws don't have to be like world-class tight. You just need them enough. This front one, this front one does have to be tightened. Um, so just make sure that this one, if any of them, is like nice and tight obviously i've painted mine so i can see where it needs to be because of obviously i've tightened it up and then put the paint on so just make sure that you give these a nice nice little turn just so they're not gonna loosen or wibble or wobble so now my screw back here again because it's protruding out the top i don't know if a piece of mine's broken or something i think it's just that trigger's broken so what i need to do is just make sure that it doesn't protrude too much because when i do when i cock it back it um yeah it just catches and you can tell that it's just scraping on the uh the underside of the cylinder so it just needs knocking back a, a quarter turn so there we go that's perfect now okay so now in the stock stock comes off by just giving it a good twist. Filled that all in there with a load of foam as well, just uh, just in case that did anything. I don't, I've not really noticed any difference, but it's there anyway, so. But that is pretty much it. That's all I've done to my SSJ10, and it's shooting absolutely incredibly, really quiet, and uh, yeah, if you do that, you should profit. As I say, if you have any questions throughout the whole process, um, just give me a comment. I'll try and help you out the best I can. And, um, yeah, see you guys later. Peace out.